Good morning, my name is Martin and this is the tribe of the fox. And today I have a video about the Frisians, the Germanic tribe of the Frisians. However, in this video, I would like to speak about the lesser well-known deities of the Frisians. So I will not focus on history as much. Of course, I will speak a little bit history, but very compact. I will keep it as compact as possible. If you want to know more about Frisian history and you can read Dutch, then there is this book, The Friesen, The Frisians, written by Luit van der Tuck. So he is a researcher who is actually working for the museum Dorestad, very important city in the history of the Frisians and the Vikings. So very recommendable this book. And when it comes to deities, you have seen this book before if you watch my videos for a while now. This is a book written by Gardenstone. It's in the Dutch language, Goden van de Lage Landen, the Gods of the Lowlands. Very compact book, 42 deities. Very interesting. With all the source material like altars and writings, everything is discussed. Very interesting. If you like to read German, Gunivortes Goos, that's the same gentleman as uh, Gardenstone. And this is the Illustriertes Lexicon der Germanischen Gottheiten. It's a thicker book. 300 Germanic deities. Very interesting. You won't regret buying it if you can read German. It's probably there in English too. I don't know that for sure. Okay, the Frisians nowadays, they have their own province in the Netherlands with their own capital city and with their own flag and also with their own recognized language. So that's pretty cool. They have an official recognized language. However, in the province called North Holland, there is also an area called West Friesland. Ah, their territory must have been bigger in the past. In the north of Germany, there is a place called Ostfriesland or East Frisia, East Friesland. So that indicates that their territory was indeed larger than the province that they have nowadays. Okay. Both the Romans and later the Franks, they very conveniently named the entire area between what is now Brugge in Belgium and Bremen in Germany and everything in between, they used to call it Frisia. Okay. There were other tribes there as well. So now the Frisians themselves, they lived, um, they were very much a coastal people. They lived along the coastline. And um, the landscape in those days was different than nowadays because nowadays we have a great defense against the sea called the Delta Works and we have the Zuiderzee Works. But that's 20th century. In those days, the Roman era, people had to build man-made hills. A man-made hill is called Terp and multiple is called Terpen. One Terp, multiple Terpen. So yeah, that was the way the Frisians kept their feet dry. Now, they were not only farmers because they lived so close to the sea that they also became fishermen and they also became um, sailors and merchants. So they had, the, in a very early stage of their existence, the Frisians had a money economy already. So yeah, the problem here was that the sea was not just their friend, but also their enemy. And let's say in the fourth century, early fifth century, the water levels were rising and many Frisians had to leave because they couldn't keep their feet dry. Their terpen were not high enough, obviously. Okay, so later in the fifth or sixth century, the water levels started to go down again and people came back. So people came from the north of Germany and from Denmark. They went to Friesland, 
They came from the Anglo-Saxon territories at the other side of the North Sea. So were they the same people as the Frisians who left a couple of uh, centuries earlier? Well, nobody really knows, so I don't have an answer to that question. Anyway, um, when they came back, let's say it like this, the Roman Empire was not there anymore, but now there was the Frankish Empire. Now, the Frisians, their territory was very strategically located. The Franks in the south, um, then there were um, the Saxons in the east, and far more up north there were the Danes. And yeah, the Frisians were good at sailing, and they were merchants, so they could trade with everyone. That was very strategic, and very good for their economy. However, they didn't only trade with the Franks, the Franks were an empire, so empires always want to become bigger and bigger and bigger. So the Franks, they waged military war on the Frisians, but they also waged spiritual warfare by sending Christian missionaries to the heathen uh, Frisians. Yeah, and the Franks were also fighting the Saxons and they're fighting the Danes. So it was basically a very big religious war, if you look, look at that that way. Yeah, so a good example of this is that uh, there was this missionary called Bonifatius, or Boniface in English, and he chopped down the holy tree of the Frisians, and the Frisians chopped him down in return. Um, that's spiritual warfare. However, in the end, the Frisians, they, they lost the war against the Franks and conversion to Christianity took place. So that was basically the end of the uh, heathen times. But it took a long, long time before the stubborn Frisians were conquered. And they're still stubborn, by the way. That's one of the character traits. It's a good, good thing, actually. Yeah, so that's uh, history. One of their biggest leaders was King Radboud. And Radboud, he, um, he was on the verge of becoming baptized. But then he said, no, I'd uh, rather be in hell with my ancestors than in heaven with, uh, well, not with my ancestors. So I don't know if the story is true, but it's a very cool story. Now let's get to let's get to uh, the Frisian deities. Now there is a deity that is becoming more and more popular in present-day Netherlands, and that is the goddess Baduhenna. Now I made a video about Baduhenna, and um, she was basically a war goddess in 28 Common Era. The Romans, they were, you know, they were pushing their power upon the Frisians. They tried to, and they were taxating the Frisians and all of that. And the Frisians, they didn't uh, went along with it anymore. So a military conflict started. And in the forest of Baduhenna, according to the writings of Tacitus, the Roman historian, in the forest of Baduhenna, the Romans were slaughtered. So it's almost like a battle in the Teutoburger forest, but on a smaller scale. And um, yeah, she becomes more and more popular nowadays, Pado Henna, although there's no lore about her, only this piece of history. And I experienced Pado Henna when I did shamanic journeying or trans journeying or, what, or meditating upon her, on her no matter what you want to call it, uh, as a very, basically a, a deity to be reckoned with. She was really dark and powerful, so to speak. Yeah, but I haven't got a whole lot of experience with Badu Hannah. So if you have experience with Badu Hannah, Put it in the comment section down below. It would be totally awesome. 
Now, was this Forest of Baruhenna in Friesland, what we now call the province of Friesland? No, it was most likely in the province of North Holland. So, there you have it, Baruhenna. There's also a goddess who has a name pretty similar. Badumna is her name. Now, there is a German handbook on mythology from 1826, and that book is probably based on a book from the 1700s. And Badumna was already mentioned, uh, already mentioned there as a goddess of the Frisians and also the gods. So of two people. And she was there described as a goddess of hunting and a goddess of the forests. Now there were also older depictions of her from the 1500s. And there she had the bow and arrows in her hands and the sheet on her back for the arrows put the other arrows in it so yeah that's basically all we know about badumna because many of these rather unknown deities is lesser well-known deities there's a lot of speculation and not a whole lot of lore and information yeah unfortunately Fierdi, also Fierdi, a deity of the Frisians, and uh, we know um, we know Fierdi from, and I will take this book with it. We know it because a Frisian prince was talking to a Saxon uh, uh, king or nobility, and he said this. The most powerful goddess is probably Fera. In our language, we call her Ferdi. She is worshipped on the sixth day of the week, Ferdi Day. So that's what we call Saturday. I like Ferdi Day better, you know. Saturday, it's, uh, it's not so Germanic. Ferdi Day, I think that's, I think that's better. However, who? was this goddess. She was important according to this Frisian prince. Now here it's said in this book that it probably means holiday or holy holiday. Uh, probably a day that she didn't have to work or that women didn't have to work. So this book says here, this goddess is probably worshipped by women, uh, in particular girls. And it's possible that on that day they didn't have to work. So that's also speculation. <laughs> it's speculation. Anyway, Ferdi, one of the lesser well-known deities. Then there is a god named Fossita. It's a different one than the Scandinavian Forseti. Forseti was a god of law. Fossita not probably um, uh, it means something like it has to do with teaching or educating or resisting so those are two very different things actually so again speculation now about Fossita we know about this deity about this deity because of a Christian clergyman writing about this god so, for instance, um, there is this missionary named Willibord, and he had a biographer. And this biographer, he has written that Willibord ended up on an island. And that's an island between, let's say, Friesland and Denmark. And that island was pretty much dedicated to the god Fossita. So there were, uh, was also a holy well, for instance because of wells, and I made a video about this together with Dirkje. So we are the tribe of the fox, Dirkje and me. This is our project. We made a very nice video about wells in Germanic times, and you can still visit those wells. Okay, so what did Willy Broert do on that island? Well, he was a missionary, so he started converting and baptizing people. And he took the liberty to slaughter some animals there and eat them. That's all we know. 
Then there was also a Christian clergyman named Adam van Bremen. And he wrote about a missionary who also went to that island. Um, that island was called Heligoland. That's probably Helgoland, as we call the island nowadays. And what this missionary Alfredus did there was basically destroying all the heathen sanctuaries there, the heathen places dedicated to the cult of Sita. Because these missionaries operated like gangs. They operated simply like gangs. They had people with them. They had often military escorts of the Frankish Empire, and they were just destroying and disrespecting. So it was very evil the way uh, Christianity spread in the Germanic parts of Europe. Yeah, well, basically everywhere Christianity spread. It was a pretty evil thing. So, yeah, that's what we know about Fossita. Then we have another deity, and there's a little statue. And this deity is called Fosta. And I don't know if you can see it. This is a statue of Fosta. Now, the interesting thing is that um, this little statue was taken from the island of Ameland. So that's an island belonging to the province of Friesland. It's in the north. And um, there was this bishop of Utrecht in the early Middle Ages. And he was Frisian, actually. And he took this little statue from Ameland to Utrecht. Yeah, that's what he did. That's why we still have this little statue. Yeah. Now, there was also a German writer, Johann Heinrich Zettler, and he wrote in 1747 about Fosta. He wrote about Fosta, Freda, Meda, and Veda. So, those are all lesser well known Frisian deities. And he wrote that they were actually very, very important. Now, the island of Ameland, was there archaeological evidence of a temple for Fosta? No. Unfortunately not. There is evidence for a 12th century church. And we know that early churches were often built on top of um, important hidden places, let's say hidden temple grounds. But then again, we go into the realm of speculation. Fosta. Now there's also a goddess named Ludana. Um, there are altars, altars found for the goddess Ludana. And these altars, they were found in what we now call Friesland, in Betrem, but also in the German um, Bundesland, what is nowadays called the Bundesland, North Rhine, Westfalen. So it seemed that Ludana was worshipped by not just Frisians. And I made a video about Ludana together with a Dutch gentleman named Stein. I did um, some trans journeying, some shamanic journeying, and we compared our experiences together. So that's not science, <laughs> that's unverified personal gnosis. And if you compare this, this UPG, then it's called peer corroborated gnosis. But we both came to the conclusion that she felt like a female counterpart to Donar. Now, Donar is a very well known god. Yeah, so Ludana, uh, check out the video if you like that I made. Okay, there's also a goddess named Meda. Uh, we know Meda as a goddess not just from the Frisians, but also from the Saxons. And we know that because of written material from 1620. Yeah, and what does her name mean? Again, we don't know exactly what Meda means. Is it ancestral mother? Does it have something to do with meadows or fields? Or does it have to do with a female warrior? We don't know. 
Now, in an older dictionary, uh, it is mentioned that she was veiled. She had a veil um, in front of her face. And she carried about, um, yeah, corn. I don't know exactly what the, the, the English name is. It's an agricultural thing like corn. And arrows in her hands. So yeah, here we have this warrior thing, but also this things about meadows and fields. So who knows, perhaps this was a very versatile uh, goddess. Yeah. Then there's also, um, and we take another look at a statue here. So this is a god named Veda. So this is also taken to Utrecht by the Bishop of uh, Utrecht. And it is said that just like Freda, that Veda is a war god. So yeah, and a god of oaths and agreements, probably. And that's all we know. So yeah, this is the end of the video. So I talked very brief about um, the history of the Frisians and gave some information about the lesser well-known deities because I don't think there are any videos about the lesser well-known Frisian deities around. So here you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video. So stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye bye.